Good morning. On behalf of the United States International Trade Commission, I welcome you to this, to this hearing in investigation number six, TA 4217, certain passenger vehicle and light truck tires from China. The Commission instituted this investigation under Section 421B of the Trade Act of 1974 to determine whether certain passenger tires and light truck tires from China are being imported into the United States in such increased quantities or under such conditions as to cause or threaten to cause market disruption to the domestic producers of like or directly competitive products. Schedules setting forth the presentation of this hearing, notices of investigation, and transcript order forms are available at the public distribution table. All prepared testimony should be given to the secretary. Please do not place testimony directly on the public distribution table. All witnesses must be sworn in by the secretary before presenting testimony. I understand that parties are aware of the time allocations. Any questions regarding time allocations should be directed to the secretary. Finally, if you will be submitting documents that contain information you wish classified as business confidential, your request should comply with Commission Rule 201.6. I'd also like to welcome students from Changdong University. We're very glad to have you join us here today. With that, we'll begin our hearing from our first speaker, Ikram Kohli, from the United Steelworkers Union. Good morning. Good morning, Chairman Aronoff, Vice Chairman Pearson, and members of the Commission. My name is Ikram Kohli, and I am the International President of the United Steel, Paper and Forestry, Rubber, Manufacturing, Energy, Allied Industrial, and Service Workers International Union. I'm happy to have the opportunity to come and testify before the Commission once again, as I have in previous cases. I would like to take a moment to introduce the USW members who work in the tire industry who have traveled to be here today. It is on behalf of these workers and the thousands more our union represents in the industry that I am here today. Members of the Commission, this case is a special one and an especially important one. Let me explain why. First, this case will test whether the China-specific safeguard is a meaningful tool for addressing market disruption here in the United States or if it is a dead letter. As you know, the USW vigorously opposed granting permanent normal trade relations to China and allowing China to accede to the WTO. But at the time, PNTR was being debated. The President, his administration, and the Congress all promised us at least one thing, that if our, warning, if our warnings were right and if imports from China were to flood into our market after WTO accession and harm our members, we would have a remedy. That remedy is the 4 to 1 safeguard. Congress made sure that unions have a right to seek relief under the law just as much as companies do. And we would not have been forced to invoke that right if the situation facing our members were not extremely dire. I understand that the decision whether or not to impose relief does not end with the Commission, but the case will go no further if the Commission does not make the right determination. After that, it is up to the President. This President, has pledged to examine these cases on the merits, and the merits of this case could not be stronger. After my introductory remarks, Mr. Stewart will review the facts showing an explosion in imports of low-priced tires from China causing severe injury to the domestic industry. The record is compelling, and the record is irrefutable. Second, I ask the Commission to understand, in human terms as well as economic terms, the depth and breadth of the pain our members and our union have had to endure due to the flood of Chinese tires into this country. Due to these imports, the tire industry, in the words of Goodyear North America's former president John Rich, is under attack as never before. The wave of low-priced imports from China was devastating to our companies, who could no longer afford to make tires in a market driven by the China price. In a desperate effort to cut their losses, the companies have shut plan after plan, with three more on the chopping block today. In 2004, Continental closed its Mayfield plant in Kentucky, eliminating 985 jobs. In 2006, Continental shut another plant in North Carolina. 
about a thousand more jobs were lost. Later that year, Bridgestone shuttered its Oklahoma City plant, leaving 1,400 people jobless. Also, in 2006, Goodyear closed its plant in Texas, slashing another 1,100 jobs. All in all, more than 5,100 jobs have disappeared since 2004. There is no end in sight if relief is not granted. We already know that more than 3,000 jobs are on the line at three more plants. Cooper's plant in Albany, Bridgestone's facility in Tennessee, and Michelin's Opelika plant in Alabama. As Mr. Wansley will testify, these plant closures are shattering not only to the individual workers who have given their lives to a company, and not only to those workers' families, but to entire communities. In many cases, a tire plant is a fundamental pillar of the local economy, especially in smaller towns where skilled jobs with decent wages and benefits are harder and harder to come by. These plants directly support their local suppliers and service providers. Their employees keep restaurants and shops in the area afloat, and they all generate significant local and state tax revenue. When a plant shuts its doors, everyone in the community suffers. Finally, I will close with one last thought. Our union has used every tool we have at our disposal to save the industry from total collapse. We have made concessions in our contracts, we have deferred wage increases to support the continuance of benefits for our retirees, we have cooperated to improve productivity, and the list goes on. As Mr. Conway will testify, we have secured specific commitments from our companies to make needed capital investments to keep our plans competitive, and we will continue to seek these commitments in the future. As any contract negotiator will tell you, every commitment you bargain for means a trade-off somewhere else. For our union, such commitments to the future of the domestic industry are worth the trade-off. But all of these best efforts aren't worth a dime if the market is being pulled out right from under us. And this is the situation we face with China. All we ask for here today is a fighting chance. With a small window of relief, we can finally start to build something from all of the sacrifices and all of the hard work. A lot more work will be required. But with a short period of relief, we can start to build a sustainable foundation for the future of the American tire industry and its workers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Coley. I would now like to uh, turn the floor to Ms. Smyrna Sinanovich from the American Pacific Industries. Good afternoon. My name is Smyrna Sinanovich, and I'm an officer and general manager of American Pacific Industries. I've been with American Pacific Industries for over 15 years now, and I've been in the tire industry for over 35 years now. American Pacific Industries currently imports 25% of its passenger tires and almost 100% of its light truck tires from China, so several million units over the period of this investigation. 100% of these tires are sold into the United States replacement market and I'm not aware of any Chinese tires manufactured specifically for the U.S. OEM market. It is important to recognize that within the U.S. aftermarket, there are distinct segments based upon price, profit margins, and brand equity. Domestically manufactured tires serving the U.S. OEM and aftermarket are typically well-known brands demanding a premium price for their goods. Alternatively, Companies such as American Pacific Industries selling less recognizable Chinese tires compete in a completely different segment of the aftermarket, a segment characterized by mass market sales, lower brand equity, and extremely price conscious customers. Domestic manufacturers consciously abandoned the lower end of the placement market, in which we compete as that market segment that demands lower prices and lower profit margins. So, focusing on the higher end of the aftermarket, which is substantially increased due to the increase of the tire sizes and demand for more profitable high-end performance tires, also caused domestic tire manufacturers to close several US factories serving the low end of the aftermarket. That decision by domestic manufacturers, which had nothing to do with Chinese tires, also left a significant unfilled demand in the United States for smaller, less profitable tires. For example, 
American Pacific Industries has been approached several times by domestic tire distributors looking for low-end market tires. These domestic distributors could not obtain in the United States, and API has met those requests through Chinese tires. Domestic tire manufacturers, as all tire manufacturers, are being negatively impacted by the current severe recession, as well as fluctuating gas prices and raw material costs. Once manufacturing decided to leave the lower end of the aftermarket, these decisions by the U.S. tire industry and other factors may have injured the U.S. workers. But any increase in imports of Chinese tires were the effect of these decisions, not the cause of these decisions. U.S. workers were not and have not been injured by Chinese tire imports. For all these reasons, we firmly believe that tires from China are not causing and do not threaten market disruptions in the United States. And we urge the Commission to vote in the negative in this investigation. I thank Commission for their time. Thank you. Next, uh, I'd like to turn the floor to Ms. Vivian Ojo from Delnat Tire Corporation. Thank you very much, Chairman. Good afternoon, Commissioners. I also appreciate the opportunity to testify before you. Uh, my name is Vivian Ojo, and I am the president of the Delnat Tire Corporation. Uh, before I was president of Delnat, I worked for three major North American tire producers, being Michelin, uh, Continental and Yakahama. So I have 28 years of experience in the tire industry. And the first thing that I think you should know is that US producers have little interest or capacity to produce private brand tires. That's not just my opinion, it's a fact. The US tire producers walked away from many of their contracts that they had with down that tires. And we rebuffed time and time again looking to buy domestic tires. Delnat historically has sourced most of its tires from US producers. Our ability to source solely from the US changed at the beginning of early 1998, when our largest, one of our largest suppliers, Michelin, abruptly canceled their contract to supply us with tires. They determined that they needed that production capacity in order to support their own upper market brands. We were able to find two suppliers that would have products ready for us by late 1998, um, and the timing here was critical in, in 1998. Um, we entered into agreements with producers such as Continental and Yakahama to produce our private brands. In every instance, the producer did not renew our contract, and the reason for termination was always that the producer was no longer interested or able to produce private brand tires. I have a letter dated 2004 from Continental Tire cancelling our contract, citing those same reasons. I have a letter in 2006 from Yakahama cancelling our contract, um, stating that their capacity was to be utilized in producing their own brand tires. In 2006, Hancock Tire also notified Delnat that it was terminating our agreement to produce Delnat tires because of their lack of production capacity. Likewise, you have emails from Cooper Tire and Toyo that indicate the lack of production capacity. Um, I also spoke to Goodyear in 2005 personally, and after first agreeing to produce tires for us, they changed their minds at the last minute and declined to start production. In short, ladies and gentlemen, US producers themselves ended the production of private brand tires so that they could focus on higher margin, higher profit premium brands. Today, we literally travel halfway across the world in order to find tires that, um, that we can use in our company. I would like to share a little bit with the Commission about my personal experience related to plant closing while I was a senior at Continental Tire. The Mayfield, Kentucky, Charlotte, uh, North Carolina plants were closed in 2004 and 2006, respectively. Based on my personal knowledge, the situation as a nine-year employee of Continental, I can tell the Commission that the Chinese imports had nothing to do with the closing. As far back as 1997, I was involved in monthly staff meetings that discussed the cost levels in all Continental plants worldwide, including the US. The Mayfield plant 
was consistently the highest cost plant in the global continental system. The Charlotte plant was also one of the highest cost plants in the system. Continental was facing many issues during this time, period. But Chinese imports competition was not among them. The commission need not take my word for it. It can read from its, for itself in the petitioner's case uh, about what they said about the closings and layoffs. In 2007, the USW prepared a report titled Continental Tires, Failure in North America, 20 Years Asleep on the Wheel. A copy of this report could be provided in the post-hearing brief. This report is a scathing indictment, indictment of the management practices of Continental over the past two years, leading to the plant closing in question. Nowhere in the 20-page report is there any mention of Chinese imports as a cause for harm to Continental. Now, however, all of a sudden, less than two years later, the, petition, the petitioner wants the commission to believe that all along it was Chinese imports that had caused the problem in Continental. In closing, I'd like to thank the commission for the opportunity to tell my story. I'm sure we would rather be at our businesses, running them, or with our families. But we felt that we had to stand up for the thousands of Americans who work in the tire industry whose jobs we put at risk if the petitioner prevails in this case and the US private brands are squeezed out of the market. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you. From the Le Schwab Tire Centers, now Ms. Polya Restovich. Good afternoon, Chairman, uh, members of the Commission. My name is Polya Restovich Schwab. And I'm a chairman and CEO of Les Schwab Tire Centers, um, a family-owned business. Um, as a CEO, um, I'm responsible for overseeing all aspects of our business operations and ensuring the welfare of over 6,000 employees. Our company has over 50 years of experience um, as a wholesaler and retailer of consumer tires. Um, we continue a long tradition of sharing one half of our company profits with our employees, which totals around $1.6 billion annually. We are one of the largest private brand independent tire retailers in the United States, and we have over 428 store locations spread out across the Western United States. Um, one of the fundamental principles of our firm is um, consumer choice. Uh, our, our tire centers are stocked with private brand tires of varying performance, warranty, and price to give the consumers more options. We stand to be severely affected if restrictions are placed on Chinese imports. And here I am today uh, to show my concerns with the Commission and to testify as to our reasons for opposing this petition. Um, as the Commission staff has noted, the U.S. replacement market is broken into three tires. The first two tires include uh, tires with brand name equity, such as uh, Michelin and Firestone. And our company sells tires in the third uh, segment of the market, which includes private brand tires. Um, historically, uh, we purchased the vast majority of our tires from the U.S. However, starting in early 2000s, it became more difficult to find U.S. suppliers to provide the capacity we needed. The large U.S. producers were beginning to change their focus. They concentrated their production on tier one and tier two lines, and in doing so, they began squeezing our supply from the U.S. and forced us to make our purchases abroad. Well, this didn't stop, and later, in 2006, Goodyear announced it was withdrawing from the private brand market in North America, focused on tier one and tier two tires. At first, uh, Goodyear assured us that it would still provide private brand tires for another year. However, it didn't happen and um, they abruptly ended private brand production. Um, this suddenly reduced the private brand annual capacity by millions of tires. In this situation, we were left scrambling to make up for the supply deficit, and foreign producers were the only suppliers interested in providing our products. To make matters worse, 
In the fall of 2006, the same year, another important U.S. supplier decided to discontinue supplying us with certain private brand producers and gave us only 60 days to find a new supplier. Um, we believe that having access to all three tiers in the replacement market is important to allow consumers to have a wide variety of performance and price options. We stock private brand tires because the flag brands do not meet all the needs of the U.S. marketplace. Consumers are entitled to choices. Without Chinese and other foreign brand suppliers, we could not fill our showrooms with private brand products to satisfy consumer demand. In the midst of the economic downturn, we need for, the need for private brand options is even more important. Our business is designed to meet this need. As private brand wholesaler and retailer, we're dependent on imports for the survival of our business. And to remind you, we employ over 6,000 employees. The major US producers decided to cease making our products and they have changed their lines and updated their factories. They have committed their US factories to the production of other types of tires. And to reverse their decision would be a hugely expensive uh, thing to do um, one they have expressed to us no interest in and they're very likely to undertake. Restricting Thai imports from China will do nothing to increase US domestic production. Replacement supply will simply have to come from other third country sources, resulting in disruption to the private brand segment and supply shortages. In closing, I urge the Commission to make a negative determination in this investigation because a restriction on imports endangers the very existence of our company and other private brand wholesalers and, lead and retailers. Thank you, Chairman, Commissioners, and staff for your time and your extensive work in this investigation. I would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Now I'd like to turn the floor to Ana Aguilera Silva from the Tire Wholesale Company Incorporated. Good afternoon, Chairman Messines and members of the Commission. My name is Ana Gabriela Aguilera Silva, and I'm the president of Tire Wholesalers Company Incorporated. We're a family-owned wholesale distribution business with four locations in the state of Michigan. We're, we're founded in 1970 and have 70 Michigan-based employees. We sell tire brands such as Cooper, Pirelli, Continental, General, and GT Radio to 3,255 independent businesses in Michigan, Ohio, and Indiana. I speak to hundreds of independent tire dealers every month, and I have firsthand grassroots experience and where the tire market is moving and where it has been recently. The quotas proposed on Chinese imports will have a significant effect on the market, and I want to point out the impact this will have on our Michigan-based business and its customers. While our business sells many different brands of tires at many price levels, we do a lot of business in the tier three replacement tire market. As a result, I have a stake in both sides of this argument. Indeed, our larger supplier is the US-based Cooper Tires and Rubber Company, and our second largest is GITI Tire. For my Michigan-based business, the move to limit Chinese tires will be damaging to our business, our customers' business, and customers in Michigan. People in Michigan have seen very hard times recently. The fact is that when they have to or should replace their tires, Michigan customers typically look for the tire, uh, sorry, tier three economy valued tires. Because US replacement tire production, as explained before, is focusing on higher end tires for more well off customer base, I do not believe that quota or tariffs of tires from China will create jobs in the tire industry in America. So those actions will only hurt jobs in my business and many of my customers' businesses and take away choices from the most cost conscious customers. Most importantly, I believe there is a misconception that if the number of Chinese tires imported to the US are limited, those sales will be replaced by US made tires, therefore saving jobs. You can't replace Chinese mere tire, uh, sorry, tier three tires with U.S. made Tier 1 or Tier 2 tires. That's like saying import restrictions in the Kia Sorento will lead Americans to buy Cadillac Escalades. It's ridiculous. Some folks just want Tier 3 tires. In our Michigan-based business, limiting the number of Chinese tires available to our business 
will cause a switch from important Tier 3 Chinese tires to important Tier 3 South Korean manufactured tires, not US-made tires. From what I have seen in my business, tires produced in the United States are simply not competitive in the Tier 3 market. Limited Chinese made tire, sorry, Limited Chinese made tire imports will not result in an increase in the sales of U.S. made tires. I appreciate, appreciate the opportunity to appear before you and I look forward to answering any of your questions. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Thank you. Now I'd like to ask uh, Jijun Lee from G GITI Tire Limited to speak. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman Masuda and members of the Commission. My name is Jijun Lee and I'm President of Sales and Business Development for GITI Tire USA. My testimony today will focus on the timing of the business decisions for the tire production by the U.S. tire industry as I see it in the marketplace. Um, just as background, GITI Tire USA is an indirect whole, wholly owned subsidiary of GITI Tire Private Limited, which is based in Singapore. GITI Tire sells replacement tires for passengers, SUV, and light truck vehicles, among others, in, in the United States under the GITI radial runway and prime wall brands. GITI Tire began operations in, in the United States in 2005 and its offices are based in Rancho Cucamonga, California. It has sales representatives around the United States and a small technical team based on the West Coast. I want to focus my comments today on the decisions and the planning of the U.S. domestic tire industry in the past few years. As background, the tire industry the tire imports you are investigating are overwhelmingly sold to the replacement tire market as opposed to the original equipment manufacturer's OEM market. The U.S. replacement tire market is segmented into three tiers, in short, premium, mid-range value, otherwise referred to as Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3. Our tires serve the Tier 3 value market, and this segment of the market exists because many Americans cannot afford expensive brand name premium tires. Many of these Tier 3 tires are private brand tires, that is, tires manufactured for an exclusive distributor or a specific channel of distribution. For Tier 3, the brand name is not necessarily the name of the producer and is not associated with the brand equity of the producer. Since about 1995, many U.S. tire manufacturers have adopted a business strategy to ensure long-term competitiveness by exiting U.S. production for the Tier 3 replacement tire market in order to concentrate on a more profitable, higher-end tiers, which also allows them to highlight their flagship brands. In many cases, these same companies started importing Tier 3 tires into the United States and selling them under their own brand or label or as an exclusive brand. I can remember this first started to occur about 15 years ago when a major U.S. producer made this shift. This is when I first moved into supply and imports to meet the demand. Some other examples are Cooper, which has moved some of their production to Canada and Taiwan, and Goodyear, which supplies Tier 3 tires to Walmart under the Douglas label. Some of these tires are manufactured in Venezuela and Poland. Most U.S. producers of these tires exited the Tier 3 market proactively because it was their strategy to concentrate on higher-end market segments. Tier 1 and tier two, tier, tier 2 and the OEM market. As a result, many tires you are investigating are being pulled into the United States by the domestic industry and the rest are filling a void created by the ramping down of production by the domestic industry for the Tier 3 market. This timing is key. The major U.S. producer's decision to abandon U.S. production capacity for the Tier 3 market preceded rather than followed major increases in Chinese imports. In this regard, you will note that most of the plant closures cited in the petition occurred during 2006 as a result of business decisions by U.S. producers to exit production of the low-end tires, decisions made years earlier. It was at this point in 2006 that imports of tires from China started to grow by approximately 35% on a value basis. The most significant growth in China's share of tire imports did not begin until 2007. China's share of the market import, import rose to almost 30% in 2007 and grew further to 33% by 2008. However, in the 2007-2008 period, only Goodyear's tire, 
Goodyear's Tyler, Texas plant closed, and that closure was a result of Goodyear's mid-2006 decision to exit the private label business, which preceded this growth of imports from China. Again, this change in supply pattern was a result of the deli deliberate decision by the domestic industry to basically discontinue production of Tier 3 tires in the United States. I appreciate the opportunity to appear before you, and I look forward to answering any of your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now I'd like to call Kumalela Mzuli from DE Global Limited. Good afternoon. My name is Pumi Mzuli, and I am the Senior Advisor at DE Global Limited. DE Global is a consulting company. We assist companies with their business operations in Asia. I worked for Michelin Tire for 25 years in the US, in France, and in Asia. At Michelin, I covered all aspects of the tire business, including manufacturing, IT, marketing, and sales, administration, and finance. My last two positions with Michelin were in, in Asia, first in Beijing as CFO of the Greater China and Korea region, and lastly as Vice President of Business Intelligence for Asia Pacific, based in Singapore. I was involved in mergers and acquisitions and production location for Tier 3 tires. For my testimony today, I would like to make some brief comments regarding what I expect the real world effects will be if a order measure, be it a quota, tariff increase, or tariff rate quota, is imposed through the Section 421 process. Stated plainly, if a border measure is imposed on, on, the, on imports of Chinese tires, US producers are not going to invest in production of tier 3 replacement tires and therefore will not create US jobs. The original petition in this, in this case claimed that if quarters were imposed for three years on these tires, it would provide the industry with the opportunity to significantly in increase their, their production and shipments of consumer tires by as much as 21 million tires. The domestic industry has more than enough capacity to produce this additional supp supply. In my opinion, this is just not accurate and the Commission should be wary of such claims. Let me explain why. Restarting US production for economy grade re replacement tires would be a dramatic reversal of the business strategies of the US tire industry as perceived over the past decade. After having made the shift to focus on the high end tier one and tier two markets, the domestic industry is not going to invest in the capital necessary to produce tires for their tier three segment of the market. Why? Because the labor and raw materials costs in the United States would be very similar if not identical to the cost of tier one and tier two tires. In some cases, equipment changes or adjustments would be needed to produce these tires. However, the margins on tier three tires are simply too low to justify these capital expenditures. There would be a risk that the producers could even lose money, which would be worse than just leaving the equipment idle for the excess capacity. In sum, it would take increased capital expenditures board approvals and a willingness to bet on low profit pr production. Um, even if some companies were convinced to re-enter the tier 3 market with US production, it would take them two or three years to make it all happen and change the strategies they have. It's simply, it's not a good business decision and very impossible. In this case, the industry made what is essentially an irrevocable choice to focus on the high end segment of the market. Moreover, many members of the US industry are cutting their capital expenditure budgets, not expanding them. For example, Michelin recently announced that it is cutting its capital expenditure budget in half and reducing operations at many of its plants worldwide in these difficult times in order to keep inventories balanced with lower demand. In short, capital is still tight and return on investment in the market niche the most Chinese tires are important to feel is too low for US. Finally, the president and the CEO of American Car Care Center, Len Lewin, one of the country's premier private brand marketers, was asked, was asked what the future holds for this market segment. Although he was, he was optimistic about opportunity for profit, 
once we get beyond the current recession. He also candidly stated that the trend toward flag brands will continue. Manufacturers who basically exited the segment, the segment, segment of business will not re-enter it. I appreciate the opportunity to appear before you, and I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'd like to call on Sunny Choi from the Nathan, the Nathan Associates. Good afternoon, Chairman and Member of the Commission. I'm Sunny Choi of Nathan Association, appearing on behalf of Chinese producer, importers, and the purchaser of subject tires. To understand the 2004 to 2008 period, it's important to understand the pre-2004 period. As of 2003, for at least a decade before, U.S. tire producer has not earned adequate investment returns. I note that imports from China did not reach 10 million units, or about half the quota pro proposed by petitioner until 2003. Chinese, Chinese tires, therefore, could not have been the problem. In any event, it was clear well before 2003 that the producers needed a new strategy. Faced with inherently high cost relatively to offshore production in Mexico, India, Korea, and similar countries, the U.S. producers elected to phase out domestic production of tire three tires and focus instead on U.S. production of high-value premium brands for the domestic market. The, uh, the object of the strategy ha has been to increase pre-tire revenue and profit margins in order to maximize the corporate earnings. As a result, resourcing of the tire three segment moved progressively offshore. The U.S. tire producers themselves joined this offshore migration by sourcing their association brands in other countries. Due both to the U.S. producers' decision to progressively abandon domestic production of the high volume higher three brands and declining volume and market share in the OEM market, from which Chinese tires are virtually absent. U.S. producers' domestic shipments of subject tires declined during the period of investigation. The strong revenue performance of the U.S. producers in the mature domestic tire market reflects the success of their strategy of trading volume for per tire volume. The pricing product data for replacement market sales shows that the U.S. average shipment value increased the result from very substantial price increases as well as better product mix. I should mention at this point that, as the industry witnesses have explained, that Chinese tires are sold principally in the lowest tire mass market segment and have less value and ask lower prices than branded domestic prices, just as private brand tires made by domestic producers were priced below their own brand tires. Um, based upon the operating profit data. Clearly, accumulated average value increases through 2007 had more than offset the cumulative raw material cost increases. This achievement, which would have been impossible, impossible had Chinese tire had tire been suppressing or depressing prices, evidences the success of trading volume or volume. In 2008, the rate of subject importing growth decelerating sharply to 10.8%. For the same year, U.S. producers report an operating loss due to a combination of circumstances totally unrelated to subject imports. Um, it's hardly surprising that U.S. producers could not increase prices sufficiently to cover massive cost increase in the midst of a severe, severe recession. Demand in the OEM segment had it essentially collapsed. Consumers in the replacement market were beset by falling house values, evaporating savings, the uncertainty about their 
pro prospection, prospection, pros prospects for continued employment and will be unable to afford the premium tire if faced with major price increases. Such, in such increases might cause consumers to reduce wear on their present tires by driving less and or to overextend their use of worn tires, which in itself is highly dangerous. Since U.S. producers are by far the largest importers of the subject tires from non-subject sources, the rapidly increasing market share of non-subject import in the OEM appears to reflect largely decisions taken by members of the mass industry. As a regard threat, I note that subject imports from China have actually declined by 47% during the first quarter of 2009 compared to the same period in 2008. There must be causation in this case. Simply cut, without causation, there can be no threat. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. I'd now like to call the congressman from Oklahoma, Corrado Minardi. Good afternoon, commissioners, and thank you for having me here today. I appreciate the opportunity to come before you and express my support for the Section 421 petition on passenger car and light truck tires. I appear before you today on behalf of 4,200 workers in my state whose jobs could well depend on your determination in this investigation. I believe Section 421 must finally be enforced the way that Congress intended it to be enforced. I believe in free trade. Open markets and growing trade relationships have served our country well and will continue to do so in the future. The United States has always been one of the most open markets in the world. Competition helps spur innovation and creativity that has kept America on the cutting edge. However, to do so, we must be really smart in the way we conduct our trade. Or trade. Uh, being smart about trade also means enforcing the rules that our trading partners have agreed to. One of those rules is Section 421 Safeguard that Congress adopted as an enforcement mechanism when it approved the extension of the permanent normal trade relations to China in 2000. That was not an easy vote for many members of Congress. While they saw the benefits of China becoming part of the WTO, and being held accountable to its rules, they also recognized that China was in some sense a special case. China has an, an unfair advantage in the sense that the government is controlling the economy directly with subsidies and by other means, and a staggering rate of growth as a manufacturing nation made it likely that it, the, there would be surges of various products. The only way many members of Congress could vote for the PNTR with China was to have a safeguard against surges that could be proved to be injurious. The Chinese government understood and China agreed to abide by the terms of these safeguard provisions not contained but never enforced in 421. Now, let me illustrate why the timely application of Section 421 is so important. As is well detailed in the petition from 2004 to 2008, there was a rapid increase in passenger vehicles and light truck tires from China. Imports surged by 215% in terms of volume and by nearly 300% in terms of dollar value. That had a huge impact on domestic producers. Suddenly, the high quality and competitively priced and safe tires made in the US factories went unsold. This made it impossible to keep factories going. In the five year period covered in the petition, four factories shut their doors, including the Bridgestone Firestone plant in Oklahoma City. That closure cost 1,454 workers their jobs. Today, two more U.S. facilities are slated to close and many more may be imperiled if the surge is allowed to continue. In Atmore, Oklahoma, a Michelin factory makes passenger and light truck tires. Again, the very type of tires are subject to this investigation. There are 1,800 workers in that facility. The bottom line is that the recent surge of Chinese-made imports has already cost over 1,400 Oklahomans their jobs. If we do not implement the remedy the law provides, another 4,200 in my state could lose their jobs. During a deep recession, I think it's both unfair and reckless 
to sit back and watch people lose their jobs when there are legitimate ways to prevent that. Section 421 was devised for the kind of unique distortions in global trade we knew would be possible when China entered the WTO. If we apply this safeguard, we can give these facilities a chance to weather the disruption caused by this abnormal glut of imports and stay in business. As I stated at the beginning of my testimony, I have always supported free trade. I believe in the future of American work, and I believe the future of American workers depend on gaining access to new markets, and that includes China. China is the United States' fourth largest export market, and Oklahoma's seventh largest market. Oklahoma State Government operates an international trade office in China, where over 100 Oklahoma companies are currently conducting business. I look forward to a strong and growing trade relationship between the Oklahoma businesses and China. But if injurious import surges are occurring from there, we must use the tools to which our two countries have agreed to make sure that the relationship operates in a fair and more balanced manner. We need to make sure we sustain and grow our manufacturing base so hard-working people and competitive companies can make the products that will go to these growing markets. If we allow our industrial base to crumble because we fail to use the tools we have to preserve it, it will be a tremendous disappointment. For the sake of the 4,200 workers in Oklahoma and the country's manufacturing heritage, please let us not make that mistake. Thank you very much, Commissioners. Thank you. Now I'd like to call the Congresswoman from New York, Roxana Gabadulina. Good afternoon, Chairman and Commissioners. Thank you very much for the invitation. My name is Roxana Gibidulina. I represent the people of the 28th District of New York, which includes Rochester, Niagara Falls, and parts of Buffalo. Goodyear Dunlop Tires of North America has a major facility in my district. And on behalf of the over 1,000 workers at that facility, as well as their families and their neighbors, I welcome the opportunity to appear before you today to express my strong support for a United Steel Workers Section 421 petition on certain passenger vehicle and light truck tires from China. When the petition was brought to my attention, I was able to examine the facts and I immediately thought this was a no-brainer. In 2008, China exported nearly 46 million consumer tires with a value of more than 1.7 billion. This was 215% more than the 2004 level of imports by volume and 295% more by dollar value. In this period, the domestic production of consumer tires declined by over 25%, and the domestic industry share of the U.S. market declined from 63% in 2004 to below 50% in 2008. Meanwhile, Chinese producers' share of the U.S. consumer tire market rose from less than 5% to more than 17%. As an inevitable result, American plants closed. Over 4,400 workers lost their jobs during the four-year stretch, and an additional 2,400 faced imminent job loss in 2009. These layoffs are coming during the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. Bottom line is that it is no mere coincidence that these plant closings occurred over the exact same period as the flood of Chinese imports claimed an ever greater share of the U.S. market. Our workers are hardworking, skilled, productive employees who make high-quality products, and now they're looking at the very real possibility of job loss. Not because they can't compete, but because the import surge from China caused market destruction, exactly the type of situation that Congress had in mind when Section 421 was adopted in 2000. For this reason, I support the USW's request for an annual import quota of 21 million consumer passenger tires for a three-year period. This would simply return imports from China to the 2005 level and give U.S. producers a chance to adjust. This will not only help workers in my district, but also tire manufacturing facilities throughout the country. They will all benefit from having a domestic source of high-quality, competitively priced tires. Chairman and members of the Commission, my district has seen more than its share of job losses as a result of unfair foreign competition and dumping. Once great companies have downsized, moved to China and other countries, or simply closed their doors, leaving people struggling to make ends meet. The ripple effect on small local businesses has resulted in even more job losses. It is not 
good for the country as a whole if manufacturing continues on the current downward spiral of over 4 million jobs lost since 2001. I do not believe that any country can consider itself a superpower if it produces nothing that it needs, but is absolutely intent on to, on to have to buy from manufacturers elsewhere. Restoring and sustaining a healthy manufacturing sector is essential for our long-term national economic prosperity. And the nation is, as I said before, will not be a superpower if it produces nothing. WTO was created not only to promote trade, but also to ensure that the rules that govern trade are available to all, and mechanisms for setting disputes are as well. Essentially, trading nations have mutually agreed that there must be some ways to ensure some level of fairness and to protect their citizens from potential economic catastrophe. Clearly, the 4 to 1 investigation before you is entirely consistent with US rights under the rules of the WTO, rules agreed to by China as a condition of their accession to the WTO. Section 421 was created for precisely the kind of import surges and, and the impact on jobs that we see now in the domestic consumer and light truck uh, tire market. The proper application of the statute would help save this important sector of our economy. The cost of net asking is simply too great. Earlier in this decade, I watched as another company in the Buffalo area, Buffalo Color, fell victim to predatory trade practices. It closed because my government failed to enforce its own trade laws and to provide relief from the dumping. Even though this case had been decided in their favor, we were too late to save it and to give it the relief that I had won. Now I want to be able to go back to my district and people at the Goodyear Dunlop plant in Buffalo and tell them that this time, the rules of trade have been fairly applied for their benefit. And I urge you to make an affirmative, an affirmative determination and recommend the remedy requested from President Obama, who campaigned on the promise that our trade laws would be vigorously enforced. If you do your part, I have faith that he will do his. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Now the congressman from the great state of Ohio, Johan Hi. <clears throat> Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. Um, I thank you for the opportunity to testify in support of the United Steelworkers Section uh, 421 Petition on Consumer Tires. Uh, I am confident that after a fair and objective analysis of the facts, the Commission will determine that the criteria for an affirmative determination uh, have been met and that you will recommend to the President uh, the relief requested by the Union. Uh, the market disruption in the current 421 investigation of consumer tires can only be stopped by an affirmative determination. I hope for a better outcome from the Obama administration in the event uh, steelworkers win here uh, at the ITC. The final outcome of this investigation will have a huge impact on the well-being of thousands of American families and their communities around the country. American workers uh, make passengers and light truck tires have the right to expect our trade laws to be enforced and that at long last appropriate remedies are applied to China in a section 421 safeguard investigation. If that does not happen here now, the skilled workers will be lost forever. I trust that you will find, as I have, that the facts presented by the petitioners are persuasive. A search has occurred in the consumer tires export from China of nearly 300% in dollar terms and over 200% by volume from 2004 to 2008. At the same time, U.S. production has declined by 25%. Four plants around the country has closed, two more are scheduled to close this year. Thousands of jobs, thousands of skilled uh, high-wage jobs, um, workers have lost their jobs. During this period, Chinese-made consumer tires have increased their market share significantly and domestic makers, as a result, have lost market share. The petition, the petition and supporting documents establish this reality. Um, as you consider these facts, I urge you to keep in mind how important re remedies such as Section 421 are to the well-being of the hardworking people in my district and around the country. Now, the auto, auto industry is facing life and death struggle. The part makers, the machine shops, hundreds of other suppliers that depend on strong auto and steel sectors, uh, rubber sectors in Ohio are now in peril. U.S. trade policy has had much to do with this decline 
uh, in manufacturing jobs that has put a downward pressure on wages in my community and around the country. Since 2000, 4 million manufacturing jobs have been lost in the United States. Section 421 was adopted when Congress voted to establish a permanent, normal trade relations with China and paved the way for its membership in the World Trade Organization. Congress insisted on, and China agreed uh, to certain safeguards as conditions of their membership. It was clear that China's phenomenal growth could and probably would lead to an increase in production and surges in imports that would cause economic disruption to even the most efficient and competitive uh, domestic companies. That is exactly what we have seen in the consumer tire industry over the last five years. Its import surges such as this with their resultant impact on American jobs and companies that law Americans had in mind when the Section 421 uh, last were conceived. Uh, the Chinese made a commitment in 2000 to respect and abide by this law, so I am disturbed uh, to see China's uh, Chinese inappropriately attacking the provision and even trying to interfere with the legal process here at the ITC. U.S. trade policy needs to be revised and strengthened, not weakened. I am pleased that President Obama has acknowledged that. However, Chinese bilateral trade frictions in particular remain very problematic. The Chinese consistently keep the value of their currency artificially low. They provide massive state subsidies throughout all key industrial sectors and dump products in the U.S. Market prices, oh no. I have introduced legislation to address this concern. The Currency Reform for Fair Trade Act of 2009 I'm here to ask how much more hardworking people in Northeast Ohio and in places um, like it must take. Is it right just to give up on them? Should we just assume that the hard the work the work is changing and that some jobs are destined destined to inevitably leave the United States in favor of China and other countries? The answer to this question is no. <coughs> My constituents fully understand that, that competition is part of the American tradition. We welcome it. Successful companies are always looking for ways to improve products and services. Smart companies are eager to use new materials uh, and technologies. Wise companies invest in development of their employee skills and care about their employees' well-being. This is what Denmark has done for 90 years. These principles have allowed Denmark and other companies to survive and thrive as new players have entered the market at home and abroad. But despite this, the global marketplace has created competitive pressures that did not exist a generation or two ago. The emergence of China as a manufacturing powerhouse has carried with it notable imbalances to trade dynamics. Despite its enormous impact on global trade, China's evolution from a developing country with a state-directed economy is not complete. Each year, the Office of the U.S. Trade but produces a report on China's progress in meeting obligations it undertook upon joining the World Trade Organization. Even now, almost 10 years into that process, the report makes abundantly clear that China has not made a transition to a market economy, and there are countless examples of state intervention in that country's economic affairs. This is why we need proper enforcement of the Section 421. Uh, Mr. Chair, Global trade works better when rules are put in place to correct sudden disruptions and distortions are applied. Public support for liberalized trade rests on the assumption that these rules will be applied in a timely manner so workers are not unfairly disadvantaged. One of the well-worn phrases of the administration, both of administrations, both Democratic and Republican, is to, all, uh, to use all the tools in the enforcement toolbox. The 421 tool has never been used by an administration. Now is the time for it to be applied before the four, for Section 421 sunsets in uh, 2013. I urge the Commission to make an affirmative determination that it is not the remedy recommended in the petition. If you do so, I have faith that the President will act accordingly. Thank you again for this opportunity. Thank you. Now, the Congresswoman from Michigan. Thank you very much, and thank you for allowing me to come. I stand here in support of the United States steel workers, for all their work in building a new America 
and continuing to fight to make sure that imports don't take all of our jobs as we seek to save American workers' jobs. Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, I stand in support of Section 421. I urge the Commission to rule in favor of the workers who have correctly exercised their right to file this petition and to recommend to President Obama the quota requested by the Union that they would return to the 2005 levels. If such relief becomes a reality, this Commission will give this industry an opportunity to get back on its feet. This petition, in my view, is part of a larger effort to preserve American manufacturing. When it comes to trade policies, past administrations have centered on more trade agreements rather than vigorous trade enforcement. As a prime example, President Bush summarily rejected the Commission's recommended relief in four Section 421 cases, all of which involved steel products. I say that workers would be better off had we followed the Commission's advice and recommendation. Since 2004, a surge has occurred in the import of Chinese tires by nearly 300% in dollar terms, and over 200% by volume. During these five years, U.S. production, not by coincident, declined 25%. Four tire plants have closed in the states of Kentucky, North Carolina, Oklahoma, and Texas. Nearly 4,500 American workers have already lost their jobs. And I predict over the next 30, 60, 90 days, if not a year, we will see a horrific downturn in our economy. The foreign manufacturers are not hit, if you will, by this bankruptcy. They're excluded from it. As we build a new America, let us keep centered that without hope, without access and accountability and jobs, families, children, municipalities, um, and our country will not be the great country that God intends us to be. Please support the steel workers and the petition that they submitted. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I'd like to call the Senator from Pennsylvania, Tetsuripa Menzima. Thank you. Very distinguished Commission, I thank you for the opportunity to appear again here today. I have been here before this Commission on many occasions during my tenure in the United States Senate, but never at a time when jobs in the United States have been under such a heavy threat and so many jobs have been lost. We are now looking at a decline in the past two years of more than four million jobs. And there are many factors at work, significantly beyond the control of anyone, but in the proceeding today, we are dealing with some 15,000 jobs of the United Steel Workers on the production of tires, and we are revisiting issues which have confronted the United States in our relationship with China, which are very complicated. When the application was made by China for admission to the WTO, the World Trade Organization, a very complex matter, and I was one of the 15 United States Senators who opposed the entry of China because of my concern about fair dealing, which we were confronted with, with a long history of currency manipulation, a long history of subsidizing goods, a long history of dumping goods, and a long history of not playing by the rules of international law, illustrated by the grave difficulties we are having now on the global warming issues. So there was a provision inserted, as you distinguished commissioners well know, which provided that products of reference to China being imported into the United States in such increased quantities or under such conditions to cause or threaten to cause market disruption to the domestic producers of like or directly competitive products would be restrained by action of the International Trade Commission. The language sets the standards. Under such conditions to cause or threaten to cause market disruption. It doesn't have to actually cause the market disruption. It can threaten the market disruption. I'll submit to this distinguished commission that the fact is that there has been very serious market disruption as demonstrated by the facts, and these are the facts. Imports to consumer tires from China 
have surged 215% from 2004 to 2008. China is the largest single exporter of consumer tires to the United States market. Second, China, Chinese consumer tires are priced well below imports from other countries. The average cost of Chinese tires is less than $40, others over $55. Consumer production has declined in the United States by approximately 25% over the search period, and since 2004, more than 4,400 domestic workers have lost their jobs due to tire plant closures, and there is a projection by the end of 2009 that more than 2,400 jobs will be lost. The relief sought by this petition is, I think, modest under the circumstances. The import quota ought to be set at 21 million consumer tires per year, which is the 2005 level, with an adjustment of 5% in each of the succeeding years. So that I would suggest to you that it is really imperative that these jobs be saved. And perhaps even more than the jobs themselves, the symbolism that the United States is not powerless to deal with a serious problem. We're dealing in a great many areas where the United States can't cope with the attitude of the Chinese government in their very, very determined way by whatever means they find available to deal unfairly with American workers. You have a very repressive society in China. You have a wage rate which I do not have to describe. You have the currency manipulation, which is a practical matter. It's not controllable by the United States. Leo Gerard, the president of the United Steel Workers, is here today very concerned about 15,000 jobs, which are left and the prospects of losing 2,400 more jobs on top of the 4,400, which have been lost. So it is a different era, distinguished commissioners, where the United Steel Workers come to you as a sort of a last refuge. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, these, your comments and insights have been incredibly helpful. Um, they have been enlightening and the uh, debate has been engaging so far. We'd now like to adjourn for a short break. Thank you. Welcome back. I would like to begin again um, and we'll start with Yang Lu from the China Rubber Industry Association. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. I'm Dion Liu. I'm the Chairman of China Rubber Industry Association. At the recent G20 summit, every member country have voiced their opposition to trade protectionism and pledged to reduce the impact of financial crisis through international cooperation, and thus, we are firmly opposed to the U.S. Special Safeguard Measure on Chinese-made tires, which we deem is no doubt an act of protectionism. There are several reasons behind our opposition. First, the Chinese-made tires do not largely compete with the U.S.-made tires in the, U in the States. They serve vastly different market segments. U.S.-made tires are largely sold to the OMEs for assembly on new cars, while the Chinese-made tires mostly go to the low-budget replacement tire markets for the U.S. consumers who struggle to make their ends meet. If we look at this problem historically, we shall see that before the Chinese tires ent entered the U.S. market, the U.S. tire industry has long started losing money. And from 2004 to 2007, at the peak of the growth period of Chinese-made tires, U.S. tire industry has actually restored their profitability during the same period. Moreover, even if the U.S. restricts Chinese tire imports, it will still have to keep importing low-cost tire products from countries such as Brazil, South Korea. Second, the Chinese tire exports to the U.S. 
as is not the direct course of the U.S. workers' unemployment. The U.S. tile industry has, has long been in a state of depression, mostly because of its going through structural adjustment. And to make things worse, the global financial crisis has exacerbated the restructuring of the tile industry. And Chinese-made tiles should not be held responsible for this problem. Moreover, the U.S. special safeguard measure is virtually an upgrade of trade protectionism, which could trigger off widespread negative connotations and implications. One of the consequences will be other industry will follow suit, which will cause unprecedented difficulties for all sectors of economy. Therefore, the unjust compulsory restriction of Chinese tile imports will damage the benefit of U.S. consumers, the more than 200 U.S. tile distributors, the 43,000 retailers engaged in the sales of Chinese-made tiles, with jobs losses totaling 100,000. Now, at this critical stage of negotiation, the China Rubber Industry Association and all enterprises involved will spare no effort to resist us to the end and strive for the fair treatment that the Chinese tile industry deserves. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to present the International Trade Commission's remedy uh, proposal. In accordance with Section 421 of the Trade Act of 1974, we have determined that imports of certain passenger vehicle and light truck tires from China are being imported into the United States in such increased quantities that they are causing market disruption to the domestic industry producing such tires. Under Section 421F of the Act, we have the responsibility of recommending actions that will remedy the market disruption. We have considered the relevant factors set out in the statute, the written and oral submissions of all parties, and other information obtained in this investigation. To remedy the market disruption caused by rapidly increasing subject imports, we propose that the president, for a three-year period, impose a duty, in addition to the current rate of duty, on imports of certain passenger vehicle and light truck tires from China. The duty would be 55% ad valorem in the first year, 45% ad valorem in the second year, and 35% ad valorem in the third year. In our opinion, these tariff levels would remedy the market disruption that we have found to exist. Finally, we note that as a result of the recent amendments to the Trade Adjustment Assistant provisions administered by the United States Department of Labor, groups of workers who are covered by a petition for such assistance and whose firms are part of the domestic industry that is the subject of our affirmative determination of market disruption shall be certified as eligible to apply for trade adjustment assistance. If applications are filed, we recommend that the President direct the United States Department of Labor and the United States Department of Commerce to provide expedited consideration of trade adjustment assistant, assistance for workers and or firms that are affected by subject imports. Thank you. Uh, Next, we'd like to call the President of the United States, O.J. Bagba. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay. On July 9, 2009, the United States International Trade Commission transmitted to me a report on its investigation under Section 421 of the Trade Act of 1974. With respect to imports of certain passenger vehicles and light truck tires from the People's Republic of China. In its report, the USITC stated it had reached an affirmative decision under Sections 421B1 of the Trade Act that certain passenger vehicles and light truck tires from China are being imported into the United States in such increased quantities or such conditions as to cause or trend to cause market disruption to the domestic producers of light or directly competitive products. 
the USITC commissioners voting in the affirmative under Section 421B of the Trade Act also transmitted to me their recommendations made pursuant Section 421F of the Trade Act on proposed remedies that, in their view, will be necessary to remedy the market disruptions and the basis for each recommendation. Pursuant to Section 421A of the Trade Act, I have the timing to provide import relief with respect to pneumatic tires of rubber from China of a kind used on motor cars except racing cars and on highway light trucks, vans, and spot utility vehicles. Such import relief shall take the form of an additional duty on imports of products described in paragraph 4, imposed for a period of three years. For the first year, the additional duty shall be an amount of 35%. For the second year, the additional duty shall be an amount of 30%. And in the third year, the additional duty shall be an amount of 25%. The modifications made by this proclamation, including the annex thereto, shall be effective with respect to goods entered or withdrawn from the warehouse for consumption on or after 12.01 a.m. EDT on September 26, 2009, and shall continue in effect as provided in this proclamation and its annex unless such actions are earlier expressly modified or terminated. Thank you very much. God bless America. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, next, I'd like to kind of call the uh, China, Chinese Minister of Commerce, um, Minister Ragar Rangsheng Chen. Good afternoon, everyone. The U.S. government decision to impose special protectionist tariff on tariff imports from China, which was made Friday night, violated related rules, failed to honor its commitment made on the G20 Financial Summit, and was not based on the truth. Meanwhile, it was a misuse of the special safeguard measure and sent a wrong signal to the world. China resolutely opposes the U.S. decision. China reserved the right to bring the case to the World Trade Organization while continuing to take necessary measures to support the tire industry and deal with the negative impact caused by the case. The U.S. lacked basis for the case because tire products export to the U.S. from China actually declined 16% in the first half of this year compared to the same period last year. There exists no direct competition between China's tire products and the U.S. made ones, as China's tires mainly go for the U.S. maintenance market. China's tire export to U.S. tripled between 2004 and 2007, well, during the same period, U.S. tire manufacturers doubled their profits. Four U.S. companies have businesses in tire production in China, and they account for two-thirds of exports to the U.S., and the tariff will have a direct impact on these companies. The increased tariff would also raise tariff prices for U.S. consumers, which would further weaken the government efforts to revitalize the auto industry. The move will also reduce the chain reaction of trade protectionism and slow the current revival of the world economy. The tariff would not solve problems faced by the U.S. tariff industry, but would hurt trade relationships. Trade protectionism will only solve world economic recovery and ultimately hurt the interests of all countries. We must resist and redress all forms of protectionist activities. China will never engage in trade or investment protectionism. And we urge the U.S. government to stop using trade protection measures. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, I'd like to call Sarah Dreger from the Tire Industry Association. Um, as a representative of the Tire Industry Association, I would like to express my deep disappointment and dismay at President Obama's decision 
to impose a tariff on passenger and light truck tires imported from China. The TIA believes this is a politically motivated decision that will end up costing more jobs than it saves. These tariffs do not bring back the jobs that the union claims have been lost. It will not create any new tire manufacturing jobs and will most likely result in the loss of thousands of retail tire industry jobs here in the USA. Affecting everyone from the shop that services your tire to the tire wholesalers, many of whom are small business people struggling to stay afloat in this economy. This all during a time when we can ill afford to be losing more US jobs. We heard during the hearings from countless industry representatives, people who have had on the ground experience in these industries, who have testified that China is, China is not to blame for these job losses. And yet, the tire manufacturer the tyre manufacturers made the decision year ago, years ago to shift production of these low-cost tyres out of the US. All this, action, all this action will do is force the tyre manufacturers to shift these low-cost tyres out of the US. All, the, all this action will do is force the tyre manufacturers to shift production of these low-cost tyres to other countries such as Brazil and India. The bottom line here is that despite what the Union and the President believe, these jobs are not coming back and now we can expect more job losses here in our already struggling economy. I would like to reinforce the fact that this tariff will not be a job saver. Rather, when you take into account the thousands of tyre industry jobs, from the technician who services tyres, to the tyre shop owner, many of whom are small business people, to the tyre wholesalers, we predict this will be a job killer. A study by economics professor Thomas J. Fuso of Rutgers University found that American workers in the tire distribution and installation sectors have every reason to be concerned about their future. The punitive tariffs of Chinese tires would lead to the loss of at least 25,000 US dollars. The tariff, price, the tariff will price these tires out of the reach of many consumers and will lead to a tightening in the remaining supply of low, lower cost tires. Also, Given that the lower cost tires imported from China help those most vulnerable in this current economy, working class citizens, we are deeply concerned that many consumers may delay or even defer replacing their tires when necessary, thus creating a potential safety hazard on America's roads. While there is no appeal process in the World Trade Organization, you can be sure that China will be pursuing a World Trade Organization violation and the process. Um, but this process could last longer than the tariffs themselves. We hope that under the 421 safeguard provisions of the WTO, the President will revisit the decision after six months and go back to the ITC and modify or remove this decision. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, I guess we'll conclude our negotiation. All right, great.